Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas Mueller. I'm an assistant professor of communication at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. I'm also a 29-year endurance athlete. I've run about 75 marathons and about 80 ultra-distance races. One of the things I've been studying quite a bit lately is the minimalist foot movement, the footwear movement, with the four-foot strike. We were lucky enough to have Christopher McDougall, author of Born to Run, come to Appalachian State, and I was able to run with Chris, talk with him more about the minimalist movement, and learn a lot about what really was behind that whole theory. One thing I've started to decide is that there's a more efficient way to run. Many times elite athletes might want to use minimalist footwear and have a more assertive strike, but for the rest of us who are just trying to get to the finish line, there's a much more efficient way to run. I believe I have the technique that will help you lose, use the least amount of energy and also be able to get to the finish line comfortably. One of the biggest discussions in the footwear movement is what do you put on your feet. Of course, a lot of people are wearing the five finger shoes. I'm an advocate of Brooks. I've been with the Brooks brand for about 20 years. I was allowed to be a product promoter and I also like to be an advocate for running through the Brooks brand and I like to wear different types of Brooks shoes. What I suggest for shoes, it's a personal preference. I like to take three pairs of shoes at a time and wear them in rotation. For instance, right now I'm wearing a pair of Brooks Cascadia trail shoes. I'm also wearing a pair of Brooks Dyad, which is a medium weight trainer with a lot of cushion. And I'm also wearing Brooks Addiction, which is a big control motion shoe with a much bigger foot plate on it. So there's a lot of different things you can do, but I like to rotate through different shoes and wear one each day on each three consecutive days, which allows my body to adapt in different ways. I'd suggest that's a better approach to footwear than just one pair of minimalist shoes. One of the first things we have to look at in running is the body stance. I've been a big advocate of chi running for the past five years, and if you study the chi running movement, the idea there is to get your body erect. I always think of the visualization of a string going through your body and pulling out the top of your head to keep you erect. Then at that point you bend forward at the ankles to let gravity pull you forward. So that's a stance. Also if you talk about what McDougal wrote in Born to Run, a lot was said about Saxby. You can go online and Google the Saxby videos and that too talks about an erect body posture when you run. When Chris McDougal came to Appalachian State, he was able to take us on several woods runs. We took some students out in the woods and afterwards, Chris was able to show us a little bit about what is the foundation of the minimalist movement. The first thing he taught us, and by the way, at that time we took our shoes off, was that what we have to learn first is to run in place. The idea was to step and get the feet slip going up. The theory behind the minimalist footwear movement is that over the past few decades, shoe manufacturers have built too much around our feet. They've given us too much cushioning, too much support, and because of that, we've adapted and become injured. One of the arguments in the minimalist movement is that we've learned to run and be foot heel strikers, that we land hard on our heels, and that's been the form of injury. Most good running technique needs a visual. I mentioned earlier that we might uh, picture a string running through our body out the top of our head that pulls us erect when we move forward. I would also suggest this for my form of running, picture an army tank. Picture the track treads on an army tank and how they roll in an elongated motion, they go forward, it lands almost flatly, comes back and then the next one goes forward. Low to the ground, oval, and the impact is almost flat. The idea of my technique is again to use the army track visual model, feet moving forward very close to the ground, landing almost flat, and then bringing back as the next foot comes down and catches the ground. Again, army track like motion. The idea again is to keep the body erect, set the body, keep your arms up and loose intact close to the body, and then run forward with the feet not up and down but close to the ground and reaching out. Once you practice and learn the running technique I've been working with for the last 10 or 15 years, you can learn this. Remember the army tank motion again, the track setting on the ground like this? It's not so much at all about heel or forefoot strike. The slightest micro adjustment can allow you to place your foot any way you want. You're coming in toward the ground flat. 
If you want to go slightly to the heel, just it's a slight micro adjustment to land heel first. If you want to land flat foot, bring your foot in flat. If you'd like a little forefoot strike, just tip it down slightly. Again, when you're coming into the ground very low and flat, tiniest micro adjustments allow you to land the foot as you'd like. Let's say you're at a race. You've tried to hold the perfect erect body stance. You're doing the nice low foot strikes. But at 12 miles in a 13.1 mile half marathon, you're just playing out of energy. It's happened to all of us. I've been at 1500 mile ultra distance races where I didn't think I could take another step. Let me show you what I've devised, a technique that will allow you to get One. to that end mile. Holding a plank isn't easy. I just read in Men's Health where actually a plank is a lot harder for core strength than is doing curls and sit-ups on a ball. So the point is, have you ever done these and then thought, how long can I hold one? The point is, this perfect erect running style that we're told to hold is like holding a vertical plank. When I first got into ultra running, one of the things that a lot of the old timers in the sport taught me was that there's something called the ultra shuffle. It's a point where you're just above the pace of walking and moving along, saving all the energy you can. Here's my point. When we talked earlier about the plank, holding an erect body stance in a plank takes a lot of strength out of your body. When you just don't have any energy left and you're trying to make the last miles to the finish line, I'd go into what I call the ultra endurance shuffle. In this type of form, I actually let go of the and I bring my body in. I actually allow my stomach to pull in. I think it's even almost psychological because there's this almost fetal position of protecting the body and coming in low. It's not pretty, but in this stance, you can allow the body to relax and fall forward and still use the foot motion to get you to the end. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video today. I blog at mastercompetitor.blogspot.com. I'm really a lot about helping people stay in the sport, getting people involved in the sport, and getting people to the finish line. So remember what we talked about today. Start with the body erect. Get the body erect, head up. Remember that string pulling through your head. Lean a little bit forward, she stance. And then remember that army tank track. Go forward, land almost flat. Don't use a lot of energy because they're low to the ground. Plant, bring back. Remember those little micro adjustment movements that can make your foot strike wherever you'd like it and then move forward. And when you get to the end and run out of energy, remember to pull your core in. Get in that ultra endurance shuffle stance, bring your body in, keep moving forward, let the core rest and you can take it to the finish line. Thanks for watching.